All right. Welcome to Coffee with Marcus and Mark, the number one stock market show on Spotify and one of the most popular market updates on YouTube. In this show, we talk about what's happening in the markets and how we are trading them. Today is Wednesday, April 17th. The Dow snaps a six-day losing streak, but the S&P and NASDAQ are down for three days straight and it could get worse. Now, the Fed says they need to see more progress before cutting rates. At least that's what Powell said yesterday. Gold looks at another new record and yields take a break, but we'll see where we go today because things are starting to turn back around. We'll also take a look at some open trades that we have with our WTF win the fear strategy. As you can see, there's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. If this is your first time here, my name is Mark Hodge. I'm head coach at Rockwell Trading, and we talk about the markets here on this show. Let me go ahead and share my screen, and let's take a look at what's going on. And Here we have the S&P 500, and today we're actually off to a positive start early on, gapping up a little bit. Uh, this was similar to yesterday, although yesterday was a little more muted and, and calm. Now, yesterday we did finish lower by 0.2%. Uh, we see today that we gapped higher, and right now we are flat for the session, uh, dipping into negative territory for the day, and now just slightly positive, trying to figure out uh, what to do with all of the data uh, and uh, any concerns out there right now. We can take a look at the Dow and we see that the Dow strong start yesterday, pulling back, but able to finish the day positive, snapping that six day slide. The NASDAQ ending the day lower, uh, just slightly above where it opened, but uh, below yesterday or the previous day's close. Today, the NASDAQ off to a strong start, but has since turned negative. Let's look at a five minute chart here and we see that after gapping higher, pulling back, filling that gap, going sideways a little bit around yesterday's close, and then a bigger dip. And now we're getting right back up towards where we finished yesterday. So this just shows that there is some uncertainty and indecision in the market. If we take a look at the VIX, we do see that the fear index is pulling back for the second day straight after the big slide, or not big slide, but actually, let me go to a daily chart there after the, the big uh, push higher on Friday and Monday. So a little bit of that S&P 500 option premium uh, getting sucked out right now. And this is to be expected after you have a spike like this. Uh, but all things considered, volatility is still in the building. It is not officially left yet. Now, crude oil, another one to keep an eye on. We know that we have the, the concerns in the Middle East and, and just... Uh, what might happen and if it, the uh, situation between Iran and Israel will escalate or if right now it's uh, really done the damage and, and maybe there, there isn't the, the further escalation that some investors were concerned about going into the weekend. Right now, crude oil telling us a story that maybe we're okay. Maybe, maybe there, there isn't going to be a huge escalation here. Otherwise, you'd see a bigger run-up taking place, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, that combined with the drop in the VIX seems that investors believe that we're, we're not going to see uh, more tensions and rising tensions and a, a bigger concern there, at least based on the markets. Sometimes the markets have it right. Sometimes the markets have it wrong. But when you look at the VIX, you look at crude oil. That's what I see there. Now, yields have been just on a tear here, and today the yields are lower. Uh, if we look at the 10-year yield, we see this run-up that we've had all April uh, with the higher inflation numbers that we've seen and concerns that the Fed will delay cutting rates. And that's actually what we heard uh, yesterday from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Uh, in fact, he says that there has been a lack of further progress this year on inflation. Uh, he was at a round table talking yesterday and he says the recent data have clearly not given us greater confidence and instead indicate that it's likely to take longer than expected to achieve that confidence during a central banking forum. And if we take a look at the CME Fed funds futures in the CME Fed watch tool, we see that uh, rates staying the same are expected 
at the May meeting, a small percentage that there will be a rate increase. And uh, I mean, that's that's unlikely, but that's what we see right now. If we take a look at, oops, I wanted to go to probabilities. There we go. We see that right now, the market is pricing in a cut for September. And then uh, here, maybe another cut in December. So two cuts rather than the three that were expected or that are expected. And even this is a little bit of a toss up. If we look at the December meeting here, we see that based on based on this cut, we could stay put, right? I mean, here it's about a, a 33 point, well, 33.3% 33 chance based on Fed funds futures that in December, we stay the same. 12.6% chance we are at the five and a quarter level. So getting cut down here, it's still about 50-50 for December. And recent inflation data supports that. And the Fed and Jerome Powell, what he said yesterday, also saying, hey, we need to focus on the data. And uh, this shows that with recent data, we have solid growth and continued strength in the labor market. Uh, but a lack of further progress with our goal towards that 2% inflation. So we'll have to see. Taking a little bit of a breather today, though, the yields have pulled back. And an analyst at UBS has said that uh, they believe that the 10-year yield will eventually fall back below 4% for the year. So their expectation is that, yeah, in the, the first quarter, we've had these big uh, uh increases in the the yield uh yields in general uh but that by the end of the year this is a, a little bit overdone and will likely be below four percent i think that's a pretty good call because i mean even uh last year uh we saw the the spike in yields just go crazy uh around uh, april all the way up to october and then once the discussion and the narrative shifted to the fed cutting rates right? It wasn't even about an actual cut. It was the narrative. You see that yields uh, got up to 5% and then quickly plummeted. And, and this was helping out some of our positions that are a little bit uh, yield and rate sensitive. And since the, these lows at the end of the year, we've rallied back, getting up of above 4.5% on its way to 5 But I would agree. I, I think that getting back down here, pullback, this looks a little bit overdone. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, you can't fight the chart. That's what the chart shows, and facts are facts. <laughs> now let's take a look at some market movers here, and let's bring up. Let's look at United here. So UAL, big day for United, up almost twelve and twelve percent, eleven and a half percent right now, uh, and just uh, moving higher. Now this comes after we look here an earnings beat and also a revenue beat. So they reported a smaller loss than expected. And this is pretty significant. Look at that. Uh, they reported a loss of 15 cents a share where analysts had them at a loss of 54 cents a share and uh, also a beat on revenue, which was positive. Now this comes in spite of some of the issues with grounding planes and uh, deliveries of planes from Boeing. Uh, grounding planes cost them $200 million in the quarter uh, with that 737 MAX 9 uh, where that door panel uh, blew off during a flight for an Alaska Airlines flight, but then it carried over into United and they had to ground some planes. So there was a, a cost there, but uh, that seemed to not be so much of an issue for United after reporting much better earnings and investors liking it up 12%. And you get a bit of a sympathy move from some other airlines. We look at Delta here. Delta also higher up 2%. They reported earnings last week and uh, right now, right around where they, they started uh, after that earnings report. You also have, uh, what is it? AAL, American Airlines, up a little bit, up 3.3%. Now they report earnings next week, but liking the report from United and getting a bit of a sympathy move there. Now, another stock on the move, Alcoa Corporation. So up 1.5%, up earlier here, getting up towards these highs. Now, they report earnings after the bell. 
uh, they rallied after President Biden talked about tripling uh, China tariffs on steel and aluminum imports. So investors liking this, uh, but also maybe a little bit cautious heading into earnings. And let's do this. Let's go to PowerX Optimizer and let's look at our earnings analysis tool and just see what typically happens. Oops, let's go back here. All right. What typically happens here, at least based on the last 12 quarters, it looks like Alcoa typically reports better than expected earnings, but it's not so much whether or not they report better than expected earnings. It's how the stock moves. And the overnight move, they tend to do better. Seven out of five quarters positive on that overnight reaction. Uh, when they are up, up 3.6% on average. When they are down or when the stock is down, down just over 4% on average. But then the seventh day reaction, so a little follow through, right, rather than the initial reaction. Uh, the seven day is really a 50-50 shot at this point. Up 10% if it's a positive reaction, down 8%. So a little more upside than downside. Uh, but some decent movement around earnings. And we see that over the last 12 quarters, last quarter was a nice win. And there were a couple of negative reactions uh, in 2023. So we'll have to see what the reaction is. It, it looks a little bit hit or miss here on AA. Uh, no real consistent uh, reaction there based on past performance. Let's take a look at the heat map here before we look at some open trades and see what the overall market is doing. And we do see that the day is mixed. There's some green, there's some red, uh, these grayish, uh, you know, not so shaded uh, boxes show that we're a little bit flat. So NVIDIA down 1.4%, AMD down 1.6%, Meta down a half of a percent, but Google up 1.2%. Uh, you have some healthcare stocks up, UNH up, uh, Eli Lilly up, Merck up, ABBV, and you have some utilities and basic materials up, but just kind of mixed markets right now. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 too, and okay, Google higher, uh, a few others, but tech down a little bit overall, a little more red uh, than than what we saw with the S&P 500. So let's take a look at some open trades here. The WTF strategy and analyzer. Well, if we look at new signals here, we see that Capital One Finance had a new signal. COF uh, was uh, an entry signal this morning. CPRT was a signal that Marcus traded. Uh, so CPRT, you have uh, an open at 54.49. I, I think that's around where he got in. It's he, slightly positive right now. We have the Dow, well, Dow Inc. Uh, rather than the Dow Index. Uh, another signal today, Marcus traded FTNT, which also opened higher, a 64.89. And it's up a little bit right now. And then there was LOW. So LOW lows, also a signal, new entry for today. Looking at some open positions, ABBV is something that Marcus is in and it's drifting higher, still open, no exit. CCEP pulling back a little bit, still in this one. Uh, hasn't hit the stop loss yet, but uh, definitely a more challenging trade. CPRT. Uh, here we have CPRT, uh, another one. Well, that actually, we just looked at that. My apologies. CSX pulling back after an earnings reaction, but not hitting the stop loss and uh, still in this one. CVS, gosh, CVS after a great start yesterday pulling back. Uh, there is a upcoming ex-dividend date. Disney was one I took yesterday and Disney had a nice day. Uh, no exit, although looking pretty good and just kind of flat today. FTNT, we talked about. Ross pulling back a little bit. And then AT&T also pulling back. So what you have with these oversold 
type strategies is you typically see this overreaction and a nice little snapback and over all based on testing and live trading we typically see that we're in a trade on average for five days however if there's this slower draw where the market is just grinding lower grinding lower without getting that 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 push higher i mean even the dow snapped the six day losing streak but it was up barely yesterday to snap that losing streak. The S&P 500 is on a three-day losing streak. The NASDAQ 100 is on a three-day losing streak. So when you see this slow grind lower, you're not getting that, that nice snapback. And that's what we're seeing right here with WTF trades. Now, it is a, a numbers game, right? Uh, we have our expectation with the strategy. We were outperforming this year. And now we'll see where these trades end up. But... Uh, there's you know, no argument that they have been a little more challenging over the last two weeks, even though they were working out fantastic, fantastically, fantasticking, fantastically <laughs> for the first four months of the year. So that, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. It can't be a little streaky, but uh, still looking at new opportunities as they come with wheel trades let's take a look at what's going on with uh, some of these wheel trades and we could take a look at apple marcus joined me he traded the 167.50 instead of the 170 yesterday 167.50 looking pretty good here and uh, got some nice premium marcus he entered a little bit late so he had a elgl fill entered late got lucky right so he beat me on the premium that he received but it was uh, totally because he got in a little bit late csiq looks like a nice day for csiq i mean two and a half percent i'll take it i uh, would like to see if this is a, a true bottom all right i wanted to be cautious adding to this i'm open to it everybody's saying uh what about a rescue of csiq when when would will you add to csiq what do you do with csiq we know that this is an interest rate problem right here, right now, right? Yields uh, higher, interest rates staying higher longer. That is definitely hurting the prospects of CSIQ because solar companies tend to borrow a lot of money. And also uh, when they sell uh, solar panels, it tends to be financed, right? So it's kind of a lose-lose situation. And when that resolves, we should be in a much better position. That's why I'm open to adding to this. But I'd like to see that we've stabilized here, right? Not trying to catch a fallen knife. NEE with the pullback in the 10-year yields, bouncing back a little bit. Love in this, this uh, trend line I drew yesterday. See, I told you, you just have to draw some lines on some charts. And uh, that's just a little... A professional trader tip there <laughs> it works sometimes uh ups down 0.9 percent okay ups we're gonna adjust this trend line here oh uh, i oh my gosh how do i even do this how can i do this hold on oh wait 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 i want to have a much better trend line much better angle uh Okay, we're just going to put it there so UPS knows that this is the bottom. This is the bottom for April. We're going to we're gonna grab hold of this line here, turn right back around, uh, get a nice earnings reaction, which uh, earnings come out. When is it? Okay, next Tuesday. So we'll uh, rally a little bit for earnings. And then on a nice earnings reaction, we'll get back up here to 160 and just see a fantastic move, fantastical, fantastically, uh, fa fantasticing move in uh, UPS. Hey, while we're while we're having fun here, let's take a look at earnings in UPS. See what they normally do. All right. So last 12 quarters, they always beat uh, at least 10 out of 12 times. The overnight reaction tends to be. 50-50. Seventh day, so there's some there's pros and cons here or good and bad. The bad is that over the 12 quarters that I'm looking at, seven out of 12 were negative uh, on the seventh day, right? 
The good is that when it's positive, it's up 9% on average on the seventh day. When it's negative, it's down 5% on average. However, can we buck this trend? Because the last four quarters, we've seen a negative reaction on the seventh day. And maybe we're due for a positive reaction. Tell you what, a 10% move on average, if we're, if we're getting back up here, because I like I said, we're going to rally into earnings, maybe. And uh, let's say we get up to 145 and have a 10% move there. So that would be 1450 added to 145. So that's 159.50. That puts us right up here, just like I said, at 160. Hey, I'm all about positive thinking. I still like UPS. I mean, it's it's down, uh, but I, I like UPS as a company. Just looking to improve uh, my break even by selling more calls, which I can't do right now based on my cost basis. So with that said, if you like this analysis, then please give this video a thumbs up. We appreciate you and your views. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We are going to be back here tomorrow. And I think I might have a special, well, not so, well, he's special, but not necessarily a guest. I was going to say special guest. He's special, but he's also the second half of the show. So he's not really a guest. He's a, a staple, a special staple. <laughs> He needs to come back. I'm getting a little too creative here. Uh, with that said, we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, happy trading, everybody.